So in our second lecture, lecture number two, we are going to define what a computer is. So a computer is an electronic device used to process, it's used to process data into information. It is programmable and has the following two principal characteristics. It responds to a specific set of instructions in a well-defined manner. So a computer is not intelligent. It is stupid as it gets. It's, let's say it's as intelligent as the programmer. Let's say you have your own creation, a product of your own creation, and then it does everything that you tell it to do. That's what a computer does. You just tell it what to do and it does that. Um, and secondly, it can execute a pre-recorded list of instructions, which is what we call a program. Let me tell you a little story. There was this other day. Um, I'd like to admit that I take alcohol at times. So I got so drunk that I started to think about things. I started to think about, okay, so human beings are sorcerers. We actually take part of our brain and put it into a piece of hardware. That was me thinking when I was drunk. So I was just thinking, so human beings created something and uh, they sort of impart their knowledge into that object for it to do what we tell it to do. Isn't that witchcraft? That's sorcery. Ooh. So I was just thinking, probably it was via thinking, but I sort of thought of that. And um, that's what um, the, the humankind, uh, that's what uh, humanity um, has come up with. We, we developed machines that can actually have a piece of our brains. And that's a computer. And for that piece of hardware or that object to imitate what we want it to do, it means that it has to be tangible, which means that it has to have what we call hardware. We have to touch it. We have to physically visualize it. That's, that's hardware. And then the software is the brains, like, oh, you're taking part of my brain and then I'm going to impart it into an object. Oh, sorcery. That's sorcery. I still think of it as sorcery. I don't know, but I still think of it as sorcery. Oh, it's just intelligence. Human intelligence. Let's call it human intelligence. It's very interesting. So let's move on. So the hardware part, like I said, what is hardware? It refers to the object that you can actually touch, like discs, drives, the display, uh, display screens, the keyboards, the printers, the boards, the chips. And in contrast, the software is untouchable, thus the brains. So software exists as ideas. We are giving a piece of hardware an idea. A concept, ooh, symbols, but it has no substance. We can't touch it. Mm, that's so sorry. That's so sorry. All right. So hardware is the internal devices plus peripheral devices. Internal devices. We're going to talk about them. What's inside? Peripheral. What we attach to the computer. So what is a device? It's any machine or component that attaches to a computer. That's a device. So if you to look at a desktop computer, we've got output devices like the monitor as well as the printer. 
We now have touch screens. They can also work as input devices. Also a screen can be a an input device like our phone. We ever thought that a screen can be, you know, uh, this, this reminds me of my friend uh, when I went to college. The Blackberry was a thing. It was actually a thing. You would score a chick, you would score a girl, uh, because of just a blackberry you just you know um show it off and then chicks would come and eat off of your hand <laughs> and it had buttons just imagine it had buttons and a little scroll ball between the keypad the the, the screen was not even a touch screen and then there was a nokia that it that came it was a bit huge uh, it was quite big uh, then there was also the iphone so when the touch screen phones came out my other friend who had a blackberry just said ah these phones with touch screens ah, i don't want to use that one what's that you've just you imagine you've just uh, eaten something and have you, you, you have to touch the whole screen with your dirty hands and he used to despise the, the touch screen phones and he stayed with Blackberry until Blackberry became a dinosaur <laughs> it became it became a relic of antiquity it became an archive <laughs> so my for my my friend uh by default he, he became some kind of uh, archivist <laughs> or an archaeologist uh, because he had something of the old a relic of antiquity it was a uh, blackberry failed to revolve because uh they had a legion of customers who thought having buttons was cool well then you'd see that with the touch screen phones the touch screen phones could have as many applications showing on the screen the touch screen phones are so generous with you know visual display of um, icons or even videos on the phone so um, that's how blackberry failed to conquer the market but it used to be a uh, very dominant but then oh rest in peace blackberry so let's move on here so the world's greatest computer is you it's you and me so the world's greatest and most advanced computer is the human body your mind is much faster and far superior to any computer in existence never think of a computer as smarter than you no because we are the ones who impart knowledge to the computers they can never be a frankenstein these computers they cannot be a frankenstein um i don't know if you know the story of frankenstein uh, Dr. Frankenstein, rather, sorry, Dr. Frankenstein monster, who came back to kill Dr. Frankenstein. Anyway, so we are smarter than computers. So the computer is made up of a processing unit. It's like um, a grinding mill. You pour whatever you want to grind into the mill. It processes um, the maize or millet or anything and then output will be merely male so we've got input devices that help us to feed data some people say yeah say saying data where's data well at least that's how it's pronounced so you have to feed data into the processing unit of the computer it can be arithmetic or it can be logical which we call control unit doing controls what can be doing calculations and then out goes the output out goes the output but then what if we want to store some of that information we have two types of storage we've got the primary storage and we've got the secondary storage storage is memory 
in our head we've got silos storage silos in our you know head which reminds me of this kit i saw on facebook uh these western west african uh guys who were interviewing random people from on the streets saying in your body where is your where is your mind located in your body where is your mind located and then people say oh my mind is located in my stomach my mind is located in my in my eyes so it just cracked me up so we're saying that a, a computer has storage of oh, memory it's got memory storage that's what we say memory storage everything that we want to store it can be either stored in what we call primary storage or secondary storage what's the difference between the two primary versus secondary storage oh wow that's tricky primary storage what's that what's what's primary storage why do we have to split storage or memory into two types of memory ah ah all right so let's just think of um ourselves let's say if you ask for a number from someone saying may i have your number please sir may i have your number and then i say my number is 078-507-4634 um as soon as i finish telling you my cell number you store it in a short-term memory you can remember it probably um, for a few hours or for the whole day or for the entire week maybe but let's just say you sort of remember my cell phone number temporarily so you store my number in your short-term memory or your primary memory or primary storage your primary storage so it's like when you go to a bar i'm giving a lot of bar examples right if you go to a bar and then you say um i want some some beer and then the bartender will just take the beer and put it on the counter and then you take it and go off seat and drink I say if he knows that you probably take a six pack he will put the six pack you know very close the, the bartender will put the six pack um close to the counter so that when you want to access or to buy to get the beer you won't have to go to the fridges to take the beer that's the same concept that machines and human beings use if you want to if computers want to use something very fast they store it in primary storage but then if machines do not want to use critical programs software or data it stores in what we call secondary memory so primary memory or primary storage is what we call ram 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 random access memory and then we've got secondary memory from rom so i'll explain fully what these two types of memories are the primary and the secondary memory primary meaning that it's very critical this is where programs critical to the computer well programs running on the computer are stored temporarily and rom or secondary memory rom that's read only memory read only memory and this is where programs critical to the computer are stored permanently in a non-volatile manner or on chips They're stored on chips programs critical to the computer programs critical to the computer stored permanently in secondary memory so there you have it um that's the composition of a computer let's move on
Um, so we've got input devices such as the mouse, the keyboard, the touch screen, the scanner. We can scan something into the computer. We've got the output devices, which are the display screens, the printer, and uh, the speakers. We've got storage devices. And um, I think I'm going to end here so that I'll explain the different types of memory on a new lecture. Thank you for your attention.